In order to make his wife sleep well, Baris turns off the alarm on her cell phone so that Sin can wake up naturally. But a text message on her phone shocks her from her dreams to sober thought. She asks her husband why the alarm didn't go off, only to be told that he wanted her to sleep in a little longer. Sin is supposed to go to a school interview this morning, and if she passes, she'll get a big scholarship. Her boyfriend's mistake has made her fail her parents and wasted her years of hard work. Overcome with anger, she accuses Baris of ruining her life and blames him for all her unhappiness. However, she doesn't realize that this is fatal to Baris, who loves her with the marrow of his bones. After the argument, Baris is different, no longer as optimistic as before, and ignores his wife's calls. Rather than being angry, he blames himself for making Finn mad and sad. His long-term emotional repression causes him to become suddenly irritable. When he sees other couples fighting, he imagines that his wife is the one who is hurt and then goes and beats up the other man. Baris even fights with the street gangs alone, knowing that he will lose, until he is so bloody that he can't move, as if he is punishing himself in this way. Gradually he suffers from bipolar disorder and spends his days locked up in his room, constantly thinking about the happy times with Fsun. Six months ago, Baris was invited by a friend to a cafe where Fsun worked part-time. The first time he saw Fsun, Baris was attracted to her, so he eagerly went up to her and wanted to talk to her. But when Fsun turned around and looked at him, he realized that he was being rude, and lie about wanting to go to the bathroom to avoid the embarrassment. Back in his seat, Baris was still staring at Fsun, when suddenly Fsun took off her overalls and Saturday down across from him in a panic. They all looked at her in confusion, wondering what the girl was up to. Then a man came up to her and called out Fsun's name. They realized he was Fsun's father. It turned out that Fsun had been working part-time at a cafe without her family's knowledge in order to support the family. But her father was already suspicious when he came here. Baris senses that something is wrong and quickly greets Fsun's father and says that they have asked Fsun to meet them here. And that's how Fsun is relieved of this situation. Looking at the back of Fsun's departure, Baris' eyes showed undisguised love. Even when he played the drums at night, his drumming revealed a kind of anticipation. But when he came back to the cafe the next day, he found out that Fsun had quit her job and that she had no contact information for Fsun, except that she was studying at a university near the station. Aris rushed to the university, but despite all his good words, the administrator still wouldn't help him find out which department Fsun was a student in. He had no choice but to ask someone if they knew a girl named Fsun, but there are more than 20,000 students in this school. He was looking for a needle in a haystack. Then he took his binoculars to the top floor of the school in the hope that he would see the beautiful girl again in the sea of people. Unfortunately, he searched for the whole afternoon but still found nothing. Just when he was about to take the bus home, Tim miraculously Saturday beside him. Sometimes fate is a wonderful thing. Both of them were surprised to see each other again. Sin thanked Baris for his help yesterday, while Baris was glad that he had finally found Sin. Although this is only their second meeting, their souls seem to resonate wonderfully. While they are chatting, Sin's cell phone rings. Baris silently watches, her answering the phone with love in his eyes. From Sin's conversation, Baris could tell that it was Sin's tutor. She was preparing for her thesis, but she couldn't find a book on the subject because she was so frustrated. Aris took it to heart, although he didn't bring it up again in the ensuing conversation. He came home late that day and excitedly told his parents that he had met a very special girl and that he had done something very important for her. The next morning, Aris found Sin at school and offered to take her out for a cup of coffee. She wanted to say yes, but had a lot of work to do, so she refused. After hearing what she said, Aris had to give her the book. Sin was thrilled to see the book she had been searching for a month, but also wondered why he was being so nice to her. Just as Baris was about to confess her love to Fsun, her professor called her for something. He appreciates the fact that Fsun is working so hard on her studies. Knowing that Fsun had no time, Baris took his coffee to her the next day. He thought it would give him a chance to talk to her, but Fsun told him not to bother her. It turned out that her mother's health had always been poor, and she needed to take medication for a long time. Her father wanted her to get a scholarship to ease the family's burden. So, she was focusing on her graduation thesis and didn't want anything to interface with her studies. Baris had no choice but to leave. But when Fsun came to the classroom the next day, she met Baris there again. She got angry and called Baris outside and told him to stop making these silly encounters and that the classroom was not the place for him to make romantic plans. Baris tries to explain, but Fsun doesn't give him a chance and accuses him of not doing his job all day long. Luckily, Baris' friend, who happened to be in Fsun's class, approached him and introduced Baris as one of his classmates. And that Baris is not here because of Fsun, but because he came to see him. As the misunderstanding is clarified, Baris, who has been wrongly accused, leaves with a little sadness. Fsun was ashamed of her prejudice, although being misunderstood by someone he likes is even more aggravating. 
Baris is not the kind of person to give up at the slightest setback. When he comes back to Ufsen, he sees her hugging another man and whispering to him in class. This made Baris jealous. At that moment, the teacher asked a question to one of the students in front of him. Ufsen turned around and met his eyes. Baris realized that he had lost his temper and left the classroom. Unexpectedly, Ufsen followed him out. Baris didn't want to hear any more of her explanations, but felt that his pride had been insulted. After all, if she had a boyfriend, she could have told him. She didn't have to lie to him with the lame excuse that she didn't have time. Ufsen felt a little funny and quickly explained that the man was not her boyfriend. Baris realized that he had misunderstood and greeted him warmly. <laughs> Baris was surprised at his own sudden words. In that case, he had the courage to come to her and express his love again. Since shock at Baris' sincerity gradually turned into happiness, she reached out her hand and touched Baris' face gently. At this moment, she decided not to run away and to accept Baris with courage. After a few twists and turns, the two lovers finally came together. In the days that followed, Baris took Sin to meet his friends. All of them sent their best wishes. Then Baris played the drums on stage and gave Sin his first taste of a different kind of nightlife. And in the middle of this noisy bar, they kissed. Baris proudly took her to his parents and announced that this was the girl she wanted to keep for the rest of her life. When he learns that Sin's birthday is soon to be, he invites all his friends to throw her the most romantic birthday party ever. Encouraged by Baris, Sin got up on stage for the first time. He matched her elegant singing with a fierce drumming, but because of the sweetness of her relationship, Sin forgot to complete the questionnaire for her dissertation. She cried to Baris and told him that she had to do 105 field trips in three days. It's almost impossible. Seeing his beloved girl close to collapse, Baris gently comforts her and tells her that there is still hope. He then took Sin on a door-to-door -to -door tour. His humor and cheerfulness make the quiz go smoothly. During this time, Sin's love for Baris grew even stronger. It seemed to her that he could make her feel at ease no matter what happened. Sin was so happy that she didn't know what to say when Baris presented her with all the results of the survey. Looking at the tattoos on Baris' arms, Sin wanted one too. Baris took her to a tattoo parlor and asked the tattoo artist to give them a couple's tattoo. But as soon as the tattoo was applied, Sin screamed out in pain. Even though she wanted to finish, Baris asked the tattoo artist to stop. He couldn't bear to see his beloved suffer such pain. Shortly after, Sin passes her thesis, and she is now just one interview away from getting the scholarship she has always wanted. Unfortunately, Baris unknowingly turned off her alarm clock, causing her to miss the interview, and she was deemed to have given up. It was hard for her to accept that she had worked so hard to lose the scholarship, and she lost her temper with Baris. <laughs> Then Sin left without hesitation, but she didn't know that those words were devastating for Baris. Because he was deeply in love with Sin, he couldn't even let Sin suffer the pain of the tattoo. But now he had caused Sin such grief, he couldn't forgive himself. After that, Baris' smile disappeared completely, and he was left with endless self-loathing and pain. He could only vent his feelings by playing the drums all night. He didn't dare to answer Sin's phone calls because he didn't know how to face her and couldn't reconcile with himself. The long period of emotional repression gradually began to change him. Sometimes he would suddenly become extremely manic, and sometimes he would suddenly become extremely calm. This is the precursor of bipolar disorder, in which the patient's mood swings are magnified to such an extent that he can't control his cognition and behavior. What's even more deadly is that there is no cure for this disease. Since suffering from bipolar disorder, Baris didn't know how to face Sin and dared to lock himself in his room all day long, until the day Sin's classmates suddenly told him that Sin's mother had died. Baris couldn't bear to see Sin's sadness, so he rushed to her side and embraced her tightly. Even though he was suffering from his illness, he hid it so that Sin would be happy. With Baris' constant care and companionship, Sin was able to get over the pain of losing her mother. On the day of her graduation, Baris organized a celebration for her. He proposed to her in front of everyone. Looking at the special proposal banner, Sin bursts into tears of laughter and nods her head in agreement with Baris' proposal. However, when she went home to tell her father about it, he was firmly against it. He wanted his daughter to be able to further her studies, so he didn't want her to get married so early. This was the first time that Sin did not follow her father's advice and chose to marry Baris instead. Although it was a pity that her father wasn't there, the wedding was a unique event planned by Baris. He played and sang a song he had written for Sin. The lyrics are full of their love, and Sin is touched by every word he sings. Even the air around them smelled of happiness. After their marriage, their life was still as sweet as their first love. But one time, when they were chatting, they accidentally mentioned Sin's father. Sin became a little sad. Baris knew that this was a knot in her heart, so he went to Sin's father alone and talked to him as his son-in-law. When Sin came home that day, she saw her father sitting with Baris drinking tea. 
With tears in her eyes, she ran to him and hugged him. At the same time, she knew that getting her father to come to see her meant that Boris had done a lot for her. Since being with Fzen, Boris' bipolar disorder seemed to have disappeared, and even he had almost forgotten about it. But that day, when he was discussing business with a client at work, he scolded the client and slammed the table just because the client raised a few different points. He had no regard for manners. When he got home, he saw the birds and had given him dead in its cage. Once again, he couldn't control his emotions and punched the wall until he felt a sharp pain in his hand. He goes to the club to talk to his friend, but is interrupted by his friend's drumming and loses his temper. Then Boris tried to apologize to his friend, but couldn't help but hit him again for complaining. It was only when he saw him lying on the floor, with blood from the corners of his mouth, that Boris realized how sick he had become. Not daring to mention this to Ufson, he secretly found a doctor to treat him, and began to take some nerve-suppressing drugs. However, these drugs also made him cold. Ufson easily recognizes the change and wonders if he's seen another woman. Boris didn't tell her about it, but in order not to upset Ufson, he finally decided to give up the treatment. After he stopped taking the medication, his temperament improved dramatically, but when he took Ufson out for a ride, he lost his mind again and drove his motorcycle at breakneck speeds. Fsun was afraid and asked him to slow down, but Boris didn't care and sped along as if he had her. When he arrived at his destination, Boris was still in a state of euphoria. When he sees Fsun crouching on the ground, terrified, he realizes that his illness has returned. He blames himself and beats himself up. Fsun realizes that something is wrong and hugs him, reassuring him not to drive too fast next time. But this incident made Boris realize that his illness could hurt his beloved at any time. So in order to protect Fsun better, he made a stunning decision. That day, Fsun made a big meal at home, but she couldn't wait for Boris to come back. Until the next morning, when she was awakened from the couch by a phone call from the police informing her to go to the scene of the incident, they found Boris' car on a beach. But he was nowhere to be found. The police suspected that he had probably jumped into the sea. Fsun can't believe it's true, because just the night before, she had planned a trip with Boris to various places. She couldn't believe that Boris had chosen to die thinking that he must have been in an emergency and unable to contact her at the moment. But when she got home, she waited until the afternoon and still had no news from Boris. Boris' friend couldn't bear to see her continue to be depressed, so he told her all about Boris' bipolar disorder. Sin then remembered the CD he had left behind the day before. She rushed home and found the CD, which contained the last words Boris had left for her. <laughs> By the time the video had finished, Fn was sobbing uncontrollably. She regretted that her angry words had hurt Boris so badly. But it was too late. Boris was gone forever. In the journey of life, please cherish the one who sees the scenery with you. Though life may be dull and boring at times, the true meaning of emotion lies in mutual trust, and the true value of love lies in companionship. Don't wait until you've lost it to regret it.